Good day, sir. Good day, classmates. I am Johan Ashley Torato, and my algae of choice is a member of the genus Acetabularia, a mermaid's wine glass, Acetabularia crenulata. Here is the outline for my report on Acetabularia crenulata. First, I will discuss the history of the species and its discovery. Then, I will uh, describe the phylogeny of the species, its characteristics and distribution, and then lastly, I will discuss why I chose Acetobolare crenulata to report on today. Before we learn more about Acetobolare crenulata, it is important to learn the history of the species. The genus Acetobolaria and the species Acetobolare crenulata were first discovered, characterized, and named by J. V. Lamoureux in 1812 and 1816 respectively. Acetabularia crenulata has since been rediscovered with several synonyms coming up during the decades following his discovery, namely Acetabularia caribeum by Lamarck in 1816, Acetabularia caraibica by Kutzing in 1856, Acetabularia crenulatum by Kuntze in 1891, and Acetabularia caraibicum by M. A. Howe in 1901. However, following the rules of taxonomy, the earliest description of the species would be the one to be accepted today, which is Acetabularia crenulata by J. V. Lamoureux. In this slide, we can see the phylogeny and the classifications of Acetabularia crenulata. So this species is a member of Kingdom Plantae, Phylum Chlorophyta, Class Ulvophyceae, Order Dasilcladales, Family Polyphyceae, and genus Acetabularia. Let us now look into the characteristics of Acetabularia crenulata. This species, being a member of genus Acetabularia, is characterized as unicellular and uninucleate, with its nucleus found at the basal portion of the organism. Acetabularia species also have similar morphologies. Rhizoids or root-like structures are found at the base of the organism. These extend from a singular stalk, which has an umbrella-like or wine glass-like cap at its other end, thus giving it the nickname Mermaid's Wine Glass. The stalk of Acetabularia crenulata may grow from 25 mm to 100 mm, while the cap can be as big as 7 mm to 15 mm in diameter. Several caps may also be developed in an individual. Sexual reproduction is exhibited by Acetabularia crenulata. This species produce isogamous gametes, which are then released through the cap or caps of the organism. Upon fertilization, three phases of development proceeds. First, the zygote will develop the stalk. Then this stalk will elongate until the cap or caps are formed at the end of this stalk. Lastly, the algae matures when the nucleus begins to replicate for the formation of gametes, which will then, again, will uh, fertilize each other, then forming another individual, thus completing the life cycle of the organism. Now we move on to the distribution of Acetabularia crenulata. As we can see in this image, all of the countries or areas in red are those where Acetabularia crenulata can be located. And it is evident here that um, there is a relatively wide distribution with individuals found in shallow waters from both temperate and tropical regions. Now, Acetabularia has been found in North America, particularly United States, uh, the Caribbean islands, Bermuda, Belize, Bahamas, Barbados, Cuba, Curaçao, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Trinidad and Tobago, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, Central America, namely Mexico and Panama, South America, namely Brazil, Colombia, and Venezuela, Australia and New Zealand, and South Asia, particularly in India and Sri Lanka, and Southeast Asia, namely Indonesia, and of course here in the Philippines. Now, why did I choose to report on Acetabularia crenulata? First and most obviously, I find this species particularly interesting for its morphology. From the outside, it looks far from what we would expect algae to look like. These magnificent organisms may be able to provide aesthetic qualities with its simple yet elegant appearance. But when we look inside the organism itself, 
it would be shocking for some to learn that this entire algae consists of a single cell only. Thus, those unaware of this species may be given a realization on how truly diverse life is on this planet, how different each organism works and looks like. Secondly, Acetabularia crenulata has been a favorite among researchers not only because of its availability, particularly in our country, but also because of the knowledge we may extract from understanding this organism. It also helps that this organism is macroscopic and unicellular, which may help scientists understand unicellular organisms since they will be easier to study than microscopic ones. Next, cell biologists and geneticists in particular typically study this organism to understand the roles of nucleus and cytoplasm in the genetic control of growth and development, circadian rhythm, fatty acid composition, and oxalipin biosynthesis. As we can see, this species is ripe for study and research, and understanding the particularities of Acetabulara crenulata may lead to amazing discoveries and a better and wider understanding of life in general, algae, and other organisms we live with in this planet. Now that's it for my report on Acetabulara crenulata. Thank you for listening, and these are the references I used while researching for this topic. Thank you.